I never really chose to be a retro gamer. I just quickly realized that I didn't enjoy the new games that were becoming popular on the 32 and 64-bit systems, like Resident Evil, Metal Gear Solid, and even Mario 64. Luckily, just around that time my older brother passed his Sega Genesis on to me, which completely changed my life. After that, and getting back an NES, my days revolved around staring into the Funko Land pricing chart, praying that they would have the games I wanted in stock for my next shopping trip. Interestingly, the very first game I ever bought for the Genesis with my own money was Gunstar Heroes. I knew it had a good reputation, but not much else. Well, I lucked out, because Gunstar Heroes introduced me to Treasure, who had become my favorite game developer of all time. This game, along with many others, have proven themselves as timeless classics that stay fun no matter how much technology improves. Due to Sony of America's insistence on pushing games with polygonal graphics and just outright neglect of traditional 2D games, little did I know that a game which would come to be known as the ultimate Gunstar Heroes clone was released for the PlayStation. That game is Gunner's Heaven. Developed by MediaVision, who would later go on to enjoy huge success with the Wild Arms series, Gunner's Heaven was clearly an attempt to recreate the kind of frantic run-and-gun action that Gunstar Heroes had done so successfully. So much so that, to the untrained eye, they could even be mistaken for one another. Although, I'll stop short of calling Gunner's Heaven a shameless clone. Now that we have the internet, eBay, and emulators, a lot more people know about Gunner's Heaven, and it's generally given good reviews. Naturally, opinions are split on which game is better. Some people say that Gunstar Heroes is the original, and thus it can never be dethroned. While others say that Gunner's Heaven took the formula, ironed out some of the flaws, and resulted in a better game. The time has come to decide who will take the throne as the king of running gun shooters. The creator or the successor? Round 1. Graphics. Gunstar Heroes was known for pushing the Genesis to the limits of its capabilities, and indeed, the graphics are some of the best on the system. The protagonists and enemies both animate with personality, like falling on their asses after taking damage. Probably the part of Gunstar Heroes that stands out the most is the multi-jointed bosses, who animated in a seemingly free, natural way that had rarely been seen in console games. The pinnacle of this can be seen in Seven Force, the robot with seven forms, although thankfully you don't have to fight them all on the standard difficulty setting. Gunner's Heaven is completely 2D, not a polygon in sight, making it a special game in an era where 3D was all the craze. The graphics are generally colorful and convincingly portray its environments, although it certainly didn't push the hardware. In fact, there's not much that indicates Gunner's Heaven is running on more powerful hardware than Gunstar Heroes. Most of the bosses are big and intimidating, but they don't have the kind of smooth, detailed animation that Treasure's masterpiece did. Their movement is a bit clunky when looked at side by side. This round goes to Gunstar Heroes for doing more with supposedly inferior technology. Round 2. Weapons and Techniques Gunstar Heroes has a really effective weapon system. You can choose one of four types of guns in the beginning, but you can freely change your weapon by collecting others that appear in-game. You have two spaces to hold weapons, and you can toggle them to use only one or a combination of both, creating a totally new weapon based on the two you have. This makes for a lot of variety, and none of the weapons are too powerful. Your character can also slide and do a diving attack, both of which deliver big damage to bosses, but also put you in harm's way. Gunner's Heaven has two selectable characters with slightly different weapons. Whichever character you choose, you start out with four gun types that you can cycle through freely. These weapons are different enough that you'll want to get acquainted with all of them to be able to use the best one in each situation. Your weapons all share a power meter that can be charged up by collecting items dropped by enemies, but it acts as a timer and slowly counts down, so you're constantly in a battle with time to keep your weapons at a higher level. You also have a grappling hook to pull yourself up to higher levels with, and your character is invincible for part of the animation when you use it, which is essential for some boss fights. Both games provide plenty of variety and leeway in the weapons department, so this round is a tie. Round 3. Challenge. Gunstar Heroes is actually an accessible game for a Genesis title. The control is so smooth that even a person who isn't highly experienced can pick it up and start having fun. 
Naturally, it starts getting hard a bit later, but it isn't just for hardcore gamers like Alien Soldier. Enemies will spawn indefinitely if you don't keep moving, so you're in a constant dilemma of not wanting to stop, but needing to kill enough enemies to make sure you can progress safely. There's a balance to this kind of approach that few developers can do as well as Treasure did. And if you're really tough, there's always hard mode, and even super hard mode. There's only one real problem with the difficulty curve in Gunstar Heroes, Seven Force. It requires you to beat five full boss forms back to back, even on normal mode. It's way harder than anything else in the game, with the possible exception of the final boss. And if you choose the levels in the order they're presented, that happens in Stage 2. Gunner's Heaven consists of five levels and a major final boss, and accordingly, it gets hard as hell pretty quickly. Most levels have a mid-boss, so this doesn't mean it's too short. It just decides to turn up the difficulty early on. Even the boss on the second level can be pretty tough, and everything after that will require near-perfect memorization of both level layouts and boss patterns. Don't be fooled. Gunner's Heaven is only for top-level gamers. It will take many, many tries to get through even the first half of level 3. Thankfully, you have unlimited continues. And you'll need them. Whereas Gunstar Heroes was about endurance and not getting flustered, Gunner's Heaven is a pure game of memorization. For having a more consistent difficulty curve from start to finish, Gunner's Heaven wins this round. Round 4. Music. If you're a retro gamer and have never heard the music from Gunstar Heroes, go listen to some of the rips on YouTube first, and then come back for the rest of this video. It was the first treasure game to have its music completely written by Hanzo Akazuo, who had become their go-to composer. He managed to get clear, unique sound from the Genesis, and it is one of the top five soundtracks on the console, which is not an easy club to get into. As much as I love the music from Alien Soldier, Mischief Makers, and plenty of others, none of them were able to match the hopeful, triumphant sound of Gunstar Heroes. Gunner's Heaven, obviously, has the advantage of being on CD, and the level themes are all high-powered and match the action on screen. These are all songs that sound like they belong in a 2D shooting game, but they definitely aren't as memorable as those in Gunstar Heroes. Other than the songs in levels 1 and 2, this isn't the kind of music I would purposely listen to on its own. It's just there to complete the gaming experience. One interesting thing is that there are two selectable BGM types in the options, which will change some of the music in-game. Gunner's Heaven certainly doesn't do a bad job in the music department, but it can't compare to the legend that is Gunstar Heroes OST. Final round, variety and replayability. Many of the bosses in Gunstar Heroes have multiple patterns that play out in a different order every time you play the game. You won't see the same forms every time when you play Seven Force, for example. One level is like a board game where you roll dice and fight bosses depending on what space you land on, so you'll generally have a different experience every time you play it. To put it simply, Gunstar Heroes gives you plenty of reasons to play it again and again. And as for the most obvious advantage it has over its competitor, Gunstar Heroes offers two-player co-op, which seems indispensable for a game of this genre. Sadly, Gunner's Heaven is a single-player affair, despite being made for a console a generation later. Now that alone doesn't automatically mean it isn't replayable, but the fact is, boss patterns in Gunner's Heaven must be memorized to a T, usually after many, many tries. The final boss has five patterns and will really push your patience to the test. But once it's done, you'll be so tired that you probably won't think about playing it again for a while. The two characters have slightly different weapons, so of course you can play through the game again with the other character, but everything will appear and move exactly as it did the first time you played it. Due to this, Gunstar Heroes clearly wins this round. As is often the case, these two games, which appear very similar at first, offer greatly different gaming experiences once you've really sunk your teeth into them. Is one better than the other? It's hard to say. They just have such different playstyles. If we lived in a world where I could only have one, I would probably pick Gunstar Heroes. It's just a lot less stress, plus you can play it with a friend. Thankfully, there isn't a law that says I can't own both. That brings us to the end of this face-off between two gaming greats. Please tell me what you think about these games in the comments, whether you have a favorite, and of course, if you disagreed with my observations. Happy gaming, and I'll see you next week!